Amazing. But today, we have a very great issue that needs to be tackled and that is the issue of pornography that is available in these social networking applications and sites and apparatus. And the scourge or the menace is such that it has gone to those as young as six and seven years of age who have come up later on and confessed as to when they had started Astaghfirullah, what they might term lowering their gaze when it was actually not lowering it. They will tell you, I was looking down at my phone. If you, what you were looking at was nude and unacceptable, Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it has an impact and it leaves a mark in your brain, your heart, your spirituality is damaged. It's like a Ferrari going into a wall. And believe me, even if it is repaired by panel beating, people would know, you would know, this car is damaged, it's no longer as it was. Keep yourselves away from it. Wallahi, it cannot bring about any goodness. Pornography will only damage you. It will only make you do the absurd. It will make you a person who has, of, who has low morals and who thinks everyone else has low morals as well. It will make you fed up of your status that Allah has given you as a male or a female to the degree that what you might term to be adventurous in terms of developing a link with the same sex would actually be a contamination of your mind by the devil. Something that is absolutely prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There comes a time when Muslimin People who are supposedly uttering the shahada, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There comes a time when people who have uttered that shahada, when they get hooked onto such dirt on their phones or on their laptops and tablets and so on, they begin to think of changing their gender. And some of them have gone ahead and tried it. And some of those have come back to regret when it is too late. This is why it's an open matter. If you watch the Western world, they get fed up. They get fed up of their lives. What is termed freedom? They are tired of exposing their bodies. They are tired of people praising them. Now they get a kick out of the same sex praising them. Then they get tired of that. And they don't know what to do. So they begin to tattoo their bodies. All this has become so pressurizing through these social networks because people are talking about it. People are encouraging it. Yet nobody is going to those who have regretted and perhaps created a club of those who have done regretful items in their lives. Perhaps create a forum of those who have regretted the tattoos that they have placed on their bodies. Some of them are irreversible. So they start off thereafter by tattooing their bodies. This also is prohibited in the Sharia. The body that you have, my brothers and sisters, is an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are not supposed to be using it and doing what you want with it according to your whims and fancies, but it is according to the will of Allah. Whatever Allah has permitted is permissible. Whatever He has prohibited is definitely something you should be staying away from. So, after they tattoo, they get fed up of that because now they realize sometimes their whole bodies are full of tattoos. And I'm sure you may have heard of this or you may have come across adverts in the papers or you may have seen sometimes little clips of people who have tattooed from the top to the bottom. And thereafter they regret, regret too late. So now what do they do? They say, I'm a male, I'd like to be a female. How did this happen? Because people are fed up of their lives. They don't know why they are living. Whereas Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. Which means except that they do that which I have ordained. That which is not prohibited. That which is in order to please me. That which has within it the consciousness of myself, Allah says. So what is your aim in life? Brothers and sisters, my aim is to prepare for the day I meet with Allah. That's my aim. Everything I do in my life, I need to ask myself, 
will this help me the day I meet with Allah? If it is not going to help you, ask Allah's forgiveness. Ya Allah, forgive me. I have done so many bad things. The world loves me. But if you don't, I have lost. And if the world hates me, but you love me, I have gained. And there will not be an instance where Allah loves you and nobody else loves you because Allah will send the love for you upon those who are pure and clean on the earth as well.